More than 200 million televisions are sold every single year. That's more than 600,000 units leaving factories every single day. Right now, somewhere in the world, a television is rolling off an assembly line destined for a living room in Tokyo, a bedroom in Berlin, or a sports bar in New York. You probably never thought twice about the sleek screen sitting in your home. But behind every television is a journey so vast and so precise, it rivals some of the most complex manufacturing on Earth. Today, we're going inside one of the world's largest television factories, a place where raw glass becomes a window to the world, where millions of microscopic components work in perfect harmony, and where humans and machines collaborate in a dance of industrial precision. This is the story of how televisions are really made. But before we step inside, if you're fascinated by how the products around us come to life, hit that subscribe button now. You won't want to miss what comes next. The facility we're entering doesn't just look like a factory. It looks like a small city. Stretching across more than a million square meters, this industrial complex is so vast that workers use bicycles to move between departments. From above, the building resembles a circuit board itself. Rectangular sections connected by corridors, each one dedicated to a specific stage of production. The roof is lined with solar panels, the parking lots fill with thousands of cars, and the loading docks operate around the clock, sending finished televisions to every corner of the globe. Step through the main entrance, and the scale becomes even more overwhelming. The production floor is a cathedral of industry. Overhead lights flood the space with a clinical brightness. Conveyor belt stretch as far as the eye can see, moving in synchronized patterns like rivers of metal and glass. Robotic arms pivot and reach with mechanical grace. Their movements so precise, they seem almost choreographed. The air hums with a constant rhythm. Motors whirring, pneumatic tools hissing, alarms beeping in a language only the machines understand. And yet, despite all this automation, humans are everywhere. Technicians in white lab coats monitor screens, displaying real-time data. Assembly workers guide components into place with steady hands. Quality inspectors examine each unit with eagle-eyed focus. This isn't a place where machines have replaced people. It's a place where the two work together, each doing what they do best. The atmosphere is electric. There's an urgency here, but it's controlled, organized. Every movement has a purpose. Every station has a role. And at the end of this intricate ballet, a product emerges that will sit in someone's home for the next decade or more. But it all begins with something surprisingly simple. Glass. In a specialized section of the factory, massive sheets of glass arrive on pallets, wrapped in protective film. At first glance, they look unremarkable, transparent, flat, cold to the touch. But these sheets are anything but ordinary. They've been polished to near perfection, inspected for even the smallest imperfections, and prepared to become the foundation of something extraordinary. Because this glass isn't just a surface. It's the canvas for one of the most intricate microengineering processes in consumer electronics. The glass is transported into ultra-clean rooms. Space is so sterile, they make hospital operating rooms look casual. Workers here don't just wash their hands. They wear full-body protective suits, gloves, masks, and shoe covers. Why? Because a single speck of dust, a stray fiber from clothing, or fingerprint can ruin an entire display panel worth thousands of dollars. The air itself is filtered constantly, and the rooms are kept under positive pressure to prevent contaminants from drifting in. Inside these rooms, the real magic begins. A thin layer of silicon is deposited onto the glass using a process called sputtering. Then... Through a technique called photolithography, borrowed from the semiconductor industry, engineers create millions of microscopic transistors across the surface. These transistors are so small, so impossibly tiny, that even under a standard microscope they're difficult to see. Each one will eventually control a single pixel on the screen. And here's where the scale becomes mind-boggling. A high-definition television contains more than 2 million pixels. But each pixel is subdivided into three subpixels, red, green, and blue. That's more than six million controllable points of light, each managed by its own transistor. Six million transistors on a single sheet of glass. Each one has to work perfectly, 
in harmony with millions of others, to create the images we take for granted. The precision required here is staggering. We're talking about tolerances measured in nanometers. Billions of a meter. A human hair is about 80,000 nanometers wide. The features being created on this glass are hundreds of times smaller than that. One mistake, one misalignment, and an entire panel becomes scrap. But that's only half of the screen. While one team is creating transistors, another is preparing a second sheet of glass with a color filter array. This is where the actual colors are born. Tiny filters arrange in precise pattern, alternating red, green, and blue. When light passes through these filters, it becomes a vibrant spectrum we see on screen. The two sheets of glass are then brought together, and between them, something remarkable is placed. Liquid crystals. Liquid crystals are exactly what they sound like. Materials that flow like liquids, but have molecular structures like crystals. They don't produce light but they can twist and bend in response to electrical signals, controlling how much light passes through them. Think of them as millions of tiny shutters, each one opening and closing thousands of times per second, allowing just the right amount of light to create precise colors and brightness levels. But liquid crystals need a light source to work with. That's where the backlight comes in. Behind the panel, a grid of LEDs, light-emitting diodes, provides illumination. These LEDs are incredibly efficient, producing bright white light while consuming minimal power. But raw LED light is too harsh, too directional. So engineers place layers of transparent plastic sheets behind the panel, carefully designed to scatter and diffuse the light until it spreads evenly across the entire screen. The result is a uniform glow that brings a display to life. At this stage, the panel is complete. But it's still fragile, a delicate sandwich of glass, crystals, and electronics that can't survive on its own. It needs protection. It needs structure. It needs to become a television. The panel moves to the assembly section, where injection molded machines have been creating plastic casings. These machines are marvels in themselves. They heat plastic pellets until they're molten, then inject a liquid polymer into precision molds under extreme pressure. Seconds later, the mold opens to reveal a perfectly formed frame, complete with mounting points, ventilation channels, and cable routing pads. The panel is carefully lowered into this frame, transforming from a vulnerable sheet of technology into something that's beginning to look like a television. But a screen and a frame are still just passive components. They need intelligence. They need power. They need a brain. That brain arrives in the form of circuit boards. In another section of the factory, surface mount technology machines are assembling the main logic board, also called SSB or System Support Board. This is mission control for the television. It processes incoming video signals, runs the operating system, handles app interfaces, and ensures that images and audio are perfectly synchronized. Watching these machines work is like watching a high-speed ballet. Robotic arms pick up components, so small, they're barely visible to the naked eye and place them onto circuit boards with microscopic precision. Resistors, capacitors, processors, memory chips, thousands of components on a single board, each one placed in exactly the right location. Then comes soldering. The boards pass through reflow ovens where carefully controlled heat melts solder paste, creating permanent electrical connections. The temperature curve has to be perfect. Too hot and components get damaged, too cool and connections fail. It's a process that's been refined over decades to achieve near-perfect reliability. But the main board isn't alone. A power supply board regulates incoming electricity, converting wall current into the precise voltages needed by different components. A Wi-Fi board handles wireless connectivity. An interface board manages remote control inputs and physical buttons. All of these boards are tested individually before they're installed, ensuring that every component works before it becomes part of the larger system. As the television moves down the assembly line, these boards are installed one by one. Automated screwdrivers tighten bolts with calibrated torque, tight enough to hold secure, but not so tight they crack the plastic or damage components. Ribbon cables connect the boards to the panel. Their connectors clicking into place with satisfying precision. Speakers are mounted. Stands are attached. The back panel is secured. What was once a pile of separate components is now starting to look, feel, and function like a complete television. But it's not ready yet. 
Not even close. Because before any television can leave this factory, it has to prove itself. The testing section is where confidence becomes certainty. Every television that reaches this stage is powered on for the first time. Software is loaded into memory, boot sequences begin, and suddenly, rows upon rows of televisions light up simultaneously. It's a breathtaking sight. Dozens, sometimes hundreds of screens glowing in perfect unison, each one displaying test patterns designed to reveal even the smallest defects. Workers move along the line with trained eyes, inspecting each screen methodically. They're looking for dead pixels, individual points of light that refuse to turn on or off. In a panel with six million subpixels, even a single dead pixel is considered a defect. The standards are uncompromising because the expectations are high. A television isn't a disposable product. It's an investment that people expect to last for years, even decades. And those expectations aren't unreasonable. The average lifespan of a modern television is estimated at 100,000 hours. That's more than 11 years of continuous use, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. In reality, most people use their television for just a few hours each day, which means a well-made unit can easily last 15 to 20 years. Achieving that kind of durability requires relentless attention to quality, so the inspection continues. Color accuracy is checked using calibrated sensors that measure hue, saturation, and brightness across the entire screen. Brightness uniformity is tested to ensure there are no bright spots or dark patches. Viewing angles are verified. Response times are measured. Every television has to meet strict specifications, and those that fall short are pulled from the line for repair or recycling. But visual inspection is only part of the process. Advanced scanning systems use cameras and algorithms to detect issues invisible to the human eye. These systems can identify micro-scratches, subtle color shifts, and even problems with backlight distribution that might not be noticeable in a store, but will become annoying after months of use. It's a belt and suspenders approach. Human expertise combined with machine precision to catch problems that either might miss alone. Then comes functional testing. Each television is connected to various input sources, HDMI, USB, streaming apps, to verify that every feature works as intended. Remote controls are tested. Settings are adjusted. Audio quality is checked through built-in speakers. Wi-Fi connections are established and verified. Software updates are installed to ensure the television ships with the latest firmware. But the factory's commitment to quality doesn't end with a simple power-on test. Selected units undergo extended endurance testing, running for several hours under different conditions, maximum brightness, high ambient temperatures, rapid input switching, to ensure they can handle real-world use. Some units are subjected to stress tests that push them beyond normal operating conditions, revealing potential weak points that can be addressed in future production runs. Only after passing all these tests does a television earn the right to move to the final stage, packaging. The packaging area is quieter than the assembly floor, but no less important. Because a television that survives a factory only to be damaged in transit is a failure just as complete as one that never worked in the first place. The boxes themselves are engineering marvels. They're not just cardboard containers. They're protective systems designed to absorb shocks, resist crushing, and keep the television stable during the chaos of global shipping. Foam inserts cradle the screen, holding it suspended in the center of the box where it's least vulnerable to impacts. Core protectors made of dense foam guard against drops and collisions. Cardboard layers create air gaps that act as shock absorbers. Each television is wrapped in protective film, then carefully lifted and placed into its box. Accessories are added. Power cables, remote controls, batteries, stands, instruction manuals. Each one placed in designated compartments within the packaging. The box is sealed with reinforced tape, then labeled with barcodes that will track it through every stage of its journey. Finished boxes are stacked onto wooden pallets, arranged in patterns that maximize stability while minimizing wasted space. A single pallet might hold dozens of televisions, and a single shipping container might hold dozens of pallets. The logistics are staggering. Thousands of televisions leaving the factory every day, bound for distribution centers, retail stores, and ultimately homes around the world. Trucks arrive at the loading docks in a constant stream, backing up the bay doors where forklifts load them with precision. 
From here, televisions might travel by road to nearby cities, by ship to distant continents, or by rail across vast regions. Some will be in customers' homes within days. Others will travel for weeks before finally arriving at their destinations. But wherever they go, they carry with them the culmination of thousands of decisions, millions of precise movements, and the coordinated effort of an entire factory working in harmony. Throughout this entire process, one thing becomes clear. This isn't a story about automation replacing humans. It's a story about partnership and precisely calibrated colors that requires a coordination of humans and machines working in perfect synchronization. It's a journey that spans clean rooms and assembly lines, testing stations and packaging facilities, factory floors and global shipping networks. The factories that produce these televisions are hidden engines of modern life. They're places where science meets engineering, where precision meets scale, where human ingenuity transforms raw materials into the devices that inform, entertain, and connect billions of people around the world. What makes this even more remarkable is that this process is repeated hundreds of thousands of times every year in factories across the globe, and yet each unit is expected to deliver flawless performance for over a decade. That consistency, that reliability, that unwavering commitment to quality is the foundation of modern consumer technology. So the next time you turn on your television, take a moment to think about the journey it took to reach you. Think about the clean rooms and the microscopic transistors. Think about the robotic arms and the human inspectors. Think about the testing and the packaging and the thousands of miles it might have traveled. Think about the factory, that sprawling, humming, living system where glass and plastic and electronics become something greater than the sum of their parts. Because that sleek screen in your living room isn't just a product. It's a testament to what humans can achieve when we combine precision with scale, automation with expertise, and ambition with relentless refinement. If you found this journey fascinating, give this video a like. It helps more people discover the hidden complexity behind everyday objects. Drop a comment below and let me know, what product should we explore next? A smartphone factory? An automobile assembly line? A chocolate production facility? And if you haven't already, subscribe and hit the notification bell, so you never miss another deep dive into how the things around us are really made. Thanks for watching. Until next time.